Hello and welcome to Move Electric, your new home for everything that's electric and moves. Now, the government is set to ban the sale of new combustion engine cars from 2030, which means electric cars are becoming more common on British roads. But that's got a lot of people nervous about where and how they will charge their electric car. I'm joined by Graham Cooper from the National Grid, whose job it is to work that all out. We just named Graham our e-leader of the year in the Move Electric Awards. I'm driving around in our other award winner, the Citroen Ami, to put some important questions to him about the national grid and how it's going to deal with electric cars. Graham, tell me, what do you make of the Ami so far? Do you know what? I really love the fact that it's the French that innovate, right? I, if somebody had drawn this, you'd have said, well, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a child's play thing. But actually, it's brilliant. It does just what you need it to do. It does. It's it small, does. it's nimble. There's loads of space in here. I mean, I'm six foot one, look. Most journeys in the UK, the average first car in a family does just 37 miles a day. Yeah. And actually, if you're lucky enough to have two cars, the second car in a family does only 11 miles a day. So range really is a non-issue for most driving. And this is a you know, short range city car. Yeah. But what a great answer to the problem. Yeah, yeah. So let's kick things off. So big question. Obviously, people are worried about how EVs will be charged. Can the national grid cope with all these electric cars? So the simple answer, and it, it, I always like to give a simple answer, is just simply yes. We can't not be ready, yeah? Because we're mission critical for keeping the lights on and keeping the country running. So there's not a way that we won't be able to cope. Yeah. But that's a short answer, really. Slightly longer answer is, look, the whole energy system is changing, right? The whole country is changing. So by 2050, the UK will consume at least twice the amount of electricity than it does today. That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, that is, yeah. That means we will need four times the amount of clean generation than we do today, okay. and that's a big deal. Yeah. And correspondingly, that means we will need twice the grid capacity than we do today, right? right? Yeah. So everything's changing in my world, but from your perspective, what's changing is on four wheels, yes. but actually everything is changing. So for me, I'm not just worried about cars, I'm worried about how we will heat homes and how we will make steel and concrete and glass and all those sort of good things, right? So. When I think about that 100% growth, that doubling in electricity consumption, you know transport is only 20% of that growth? So in my world, cleaning transport is the easiest of things to do on the journey to net zero. Yeah. But I didn't say easy. Yeah. Yeah? It's easiest. Okay, okay. So Graham, with um, the current situation with electric cars, last year there was record sales for fully electric vehicles. What is the situation like now? And moving forward, what needs to be done? Well, from a national grid perspective, we look at the future in a whole bunch of, you know, we use scenarios, right? Because we don't have a magic crystal ball to know what the answer looks like. But the one thing we do is we're quite conservative with our forecasting. And a couple of years ago, we forecasted the uptake in EVs. And pretty much the day we issued the report, the SMMT published EV sales figures, which were slightly higher than our optimistic scenario, right? So we really watch the market very closely. But don't forget, National Grid doesn't make electricity, doesn't yeah. buy electricity, doesn't sell electricity, it doesn't sell cars, yes. right? We don't build power stations. So we are reacting to what's going on around us and then able to sort of do more or less. So what we're seeing right now is growth in battery storage to help with flexibility. Yeah. We see a growth in onshore wind and offshore wind and we're building wires for that. We see a growth in nuclear, so we're building wires for that. Yeah. So that's where power is coming from. But what we're seeing is new places where power's going to. This is one of them. But also we're working out how much demand will happen in your home when maybe you go away from a gas boiler in the future and have a heat pump. Okay. So actually, lots of things are changing. Yeah. And we have to sort of react to that. But big infrastructure takes time. Okay, okay. And on actually where the energy comes from, obviously if you're charging your car with non-renewable sources, Yes. How easy is it to swap to the renewable sources and how quickly can it be done? Okay, so we're well on our way to cleaning the power grid, okay? So before 2018, the dirtiest thing we did was make power. The second dirtiest was transport. Right. But from 2017 to 2018, transport became the dirtiest, not because it got dirtier, because making power got cleaner. Okay. So actually, since 2018, the UK has more clean power than power made by burning stuff. 
So the grid is clean, getting cleaner. Yeah. But if you charge your car smart, you know, on one of these sort of smart tariffs, what you're doing is you're putting the cleanest and cheapest power in your car. Okay. And that helps more renewables be built. Okay. Interesting. That's very insightful. What would you say are the biggest changes that the national grid has had to make to meet the demand for power for electric cars? So at the moment, don't forget, electric cars are roughly 2% of cars on the road. So although we see the cars, electrically, we're not really seeing it yet, but we know it's coming, yes. right? So it's, it's more about being prepared, right, than having to respond. Okay. But this is why um, you know, we contribute to things like the government's EV energy task force. So don't forget, we're an energy utility. We're not a transport business. We're not course, a car yeah. company. But if you put the right things in place, like um, having smart chargers, right? So charging when the grid is clean is cheapest. We know that that will mean we have to build less wires, right? As and when the uptake in cars comes. Yeah. But in the same way, people forget that, oh, why would I want a smart charger? Because I want to charge when I charge. Yes, but people forget that the grid network is actually paid for by build payers. Yes. So you don't want me to build too many more wires, and if I can build less wires, you'd like that, right? Yes. Right. So that's why we've got legislation coming for smart chargers. Okay. It's not because Big Brother wants to control you. No. It's because we're trying to save you money. Yes, and, and that's an important thing in the current climate with the energy bills of rising. Course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But still, even running a car on electricity, even with you know, the increase in electricity bills, because of the efficiency is still cheaper than running a petrol or diesel car. There's a lot of talk about vehicle to grid charging. Can you explain to people what exactly that is and how it all works? Okay, so in a world where we have more renewables, so the wind farms and solar, right, the power comes and goes when the resource is there, you yeah. know, when it's more windy, more sunny. So actually flexibility in the energy system is really important. And flexibility comes nicely in the form of a battery, yeah? So we're sitting on a battery now. Yeah. If you're in an electric car, you're sitting on a battery. So the principle is charge your car when the grid is cleanest and cheapest. And then if there's, if there's a need for it, or you want the cheapest and cleanest power back, theoretically, you can get it out of the car at peak times. So there are a lot of people working on how to do that, um, because at the moment, only 2% of cars on the road are electric. But what happens when the majority of cars on the road are electric? That's a lot of stored energy. Yeah. So the energy industry is interested in this. The car companies are interested in this. And actually, your energy retailer is interested in this just from the basis that it's a huge opportunity for something that we've never been able to do before. Yeah. So, Graham, you drive an EV. First of all, what do you drive? And secondly, how have you applied driving an electric car to your role? Oh, that's really good. So the, the first thing, let, let's get first things first. So bearing in mind I work for a large FTSE listed business, right? You know, it's almost a, you know, people often see just the brand. A lot of people say, well, you're just paid to talk about this. Well, the cold reality for me is I'm not just paid to talk about this, I do it myself. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, from a heating perspective, I heat my home using heat pumps, right? So I'm already on that sort of clean journey. But I'm also a lover of cars. So um, I guess the catalyst for driving an EV was I was a wind farmer, but I also loved cars. And I felt really sort of uh, challenged that I'm doing good stuff to make clean energy, but I'm traveling in a dirty way, right? So I borrowed a Nissan Leaf and did one of their four day test drives. Okay. And I was commuting into London in a car and it cost me less than two pounds in electricity, but I was avoiding a 30 pound train ticket. Yeah. And I thought, damn, forget about the car, just traveling, this changes everything. It changed my career, I then worked for National Grid and then um, I went out and I've had a Tesla Model S since 2017, yeah. which was great. You know, it's a really amazing sort of package. Um, you know, great to drive, really clever, really you know, groundbreaking. Um, but actually that went back during lockdown, so that went back a year ago. Yeah. And um, I've just received my new company car, which is a Mercedes EQC. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. Um, I guess, what did I learn? Well, I mean, I think the thing from my perspective is, for me, driving an electric car, it's just a car now. It's normalized to me. Yeah. The only thing I go to the petrol station for is usually for a jerry can for my mower. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and, and I think it's one of those things that, you know, this is not about killing off the, the internal combustion engine, right? 
you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're a bad person, you know, you're trying to get me to, to give up my classic car or my specialist car. And I'm like, no, I'm the energy guy. I'm just part of the conduit to, to make this happen. But actually, you can, I mean, the, the nearest analogy for me, right, is in Victorian England, people were complaining they were wandering around ankle deep in horse manure, yeah. right? And then we went to uh, cars and the horse manure disappeared, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean we don't have horses. Horses are now a leisure and sport activity, yeah, exactly. right? And everyday transport isn't horses. So in the same way, the way I see the transition, having been in an EV is, it's okay to have a classic car, which will only do a you know, thousand miles a year. But transport, just the everyday stuff, school run, commuting, in electric it's just better. Yeah. Yeah, uh, cheaper, more efficient, cleaner, simpler. And of course, if you have a driveway, you charge it whilst you're sleeping. If you don't have a driveway, you can charge it whilst it's at the station or at your workplace, or you even char get charges now when you, sh you know, where you do your shopping. So it's not like swapping petrol and diesel for electricity. It's more like charging a phone, you know, find a socket, plug it in. You know, it's a bit like your mobile phone. You know when you get home, you don't wait till it's empty to plug it in. No, you would plug it in when you got you to just, go back. Yeah. You just plug it in. So a lot of people in the EV world work on the principle of ABC. Yeah. Always be charging. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good that's a good way of doing it. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Graham, for that insight. I'm sure that will have put a lot of people at ease. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to find more content from Move Electric, please head over to our website, moveelectric.com. And please don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Thank you.